I just finished up my workout. I did like a two and a half mile run. I did arms and abs and I'm hot <laughs> and exhausted. And today Jake and I are gonna fire up the hippie hot tub. Um, and before I get it all warmed up, I think I'm gonna do one last cold plunge. I think this will be like my fifth time doing it. <laughs> and I absolutely love doing a cold plunge. I can't believe that I haven't been doing this a lot sooner. I have really been enjoying the cold plunges. Um, I don't know, it just does something to me. It just like wakes me up and gives me a burst of energy and motivation and, and all that. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up so then Jake and I can enjoy a jacuzzi soak tonight, um, which will be really nice. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna do this while I'm still hot for my workout so let's go. as you can see there is no smoke coming out of the chimney so that means it's not on <laughs> it is it is cold but what is really nice is it's in full sun right now so the sun is just hitting this spot really nicely the sun's not really like that warm right now at <laughs> the moment but um, I'm gonna do this before I get too cold and hopefully I don't back out um, okay let's just do this let's just do it <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna head inside, dry off, make some juice, and uh, light this thing up and warm it up, and which will be so much more enjoyable. <laughs> On Puma. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? It's your turn. Hey, Nicole and I did pizza last night and uh, we did some other dinner type things, but uh, today we wanted to do some more baking, so we lit it up again two days in a row and 
as it's getting warm, I wanted to take this chance to answer a few of your questions that I see in the comments here on YouTube that are recurring, that are the same questions over and over again about the wood stove. A lot of you guys um, like to see us cooking this and you like to see the series where we built it over two and a half months. I thought it would take me 10 days, but it did not, <laughs> two and a half months. And all my skin has now grown back. It was definitely a masonry job. And anytime I see any kind of earthen project from this point on, I have a lot of respect and sympathy for the people that built it. One question that keeps happening over and over again is, uh, don't you get wood ash or fire in the food? And it's just not true. I mean, if you put a pizza in there, um, I've already taken the fire and I've moved it to the back and I've let it die down to a comfortable size. And we keep the brick on the ground here in the front where we cook the pizzas clean. So I have a cotton mop and I wash the brick and I scrape out any of the, the ash or soot and then I'm cooking on a clean surface. And as the fire pops and sparks like that, sure it may throw some you know, charcoal inside the, the food, but aren't you guys brushing your teeth with charcoal all over your toothpaste? Aren't you um, doing charcoal infused water? And I feel like humans are getting too weak and soft and they're forgetting their caveman, cavewoman roots and how we have evolved to eat by fire. And this is an oven that is fueled by fire, it's cooked by fire, but it's built out of earth and clay and sand and rock. Very caveman, cavewoman style of cooking. And then folks say, once the fire is done, doesn't the pizza oven just get cold and die out? Well, that's not true. If you watch us build it, what you're seeing now is the finished product, but you're not seeing all the layers the layers, the layers that went into building this, the layers on the ground, on the floor, and the layers of the dome that all work together to insulate this oven. So we have layers of sand and layers of glass bottles and layers of perlite and layers of clay and brick, the fire brick, and layers of cob. And they all work together to insulate the heat and keep it inside the dome. So right now, I mean, it's really hot in there. Another question we get from people that um, didn't watch the whole series, they kind of jumped in halfway through is, you know, isn't it too hot to cook a pie or too hot to cook a pizza? Well, pizza is the first thing that we cook when the fire's raging. So we, we got this oven last time to 1100 degrees, 1100 degrees. And the pizza was cooking in like two minutes. And then when we're done cooking like 10 or 20 pizzas, cause we like to have pizza for breakfast the next morning, why heat it up? and go to all that work unless we're gonna cook a lot of serious food. Then we let the fire die down and we wait until the temperature in the oven is a appropriate temperature for the next food item. So if we need it to be like 400 degrees for cookies or you know a pie, then we wait an hour until the temperature dies down to that degree. If we need it to be lower for like dehydrating herbs, then we wait till it dies down into the hundreds for that. And um, so you can cook a myriad of different foods depending on how you have either amped the fire up or how you let the fire die down. And right now, like in the back there, it's about 750 degrees. In the side, it's about 600. I also know how hot it is by the color of the brick. So right now, all the brick is black. From the previous time we used it, the, the fire created this black soot on the fire brick inside the dome. And what I find is that once the heat inside the oven gets about 800 degrees or a little more than 800, the black soot on the fire brick turns white. And when that white happens, I know I'm ready to start cooking pizza because that's the temperature at which the soot is burning up. And that's kind of why the pizza, the food stays healthy and clean. And why the oven stays clean is that heat just disinfects it and cleans it up and makes it really amazing. Right now, you guys can't feel, but the oven is cool to the touch. There's no warmth at all on the outside. So I know that it's heating up that brick. It's heating up that perlite. It's heating up that uh, cob. And once the fire goes away and the door goes back on, then the oven doesn't shoot that heat into the air. 
it brings it all back inside the dome. And also the floor is important. We have the fire brick resting on top of sand on glass bottles. So the air space inside those glass bottles warms up. And then when the fire goes out, those bottles release that heat and it goes back into the sand and back into the fire brick and back into the dome. So we get five, six, seven hours plus of cooking. And then once I'm done cooking, I build a little stack of wood inside there for the next time so that it can be drying out all night. So the wood is dry and ready to ignite for the next cooking. Let's go inside there and see if uh, Nicole has the cookies and the bread ready to go. Here, you want to try a little bit? See if you like it. <sighs> Did you just say have to go? Was it good? I love peanut butter cookies. But yeah, those are really, really tasty. Good. Is the oven almost ready? Yeah, it's ready. What do you got there? Some bread, ready for the oven. <laughs> you put it on the counter. <laughs> Thanks, babe. You're welcome. Bye. Hey, it's still too hot for baking, so uh, we made our first like quiche. Ooh. It's gonna cook at like 550, 600 degrees. Right. What do you think? Oh, that cooks fast because I'm hungry. <laughs> 
Hit it with the gun. Let's see what the, what the temp is for them. I would say it's gonna cook pretty damn fast. I hope so. All right. Okay. It also smells so good. <laughs> Do you think it's done? Um. No, it's still pretty runny in the middle. It's got the yeah. vegan cheese on it? Yeah. Probably put it in there for a little bit longer. Cool. I just hope the top cooks. <laughs> How's it look? It looks and it smells very good. Looks great. So good. It's perfect. It's really good. I bet this crispy part is going to be really good too. Mm. There's that popped out of my mouth. Saw that. I feel. Yeah, I think we cooked it to perfection here. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad we left it in a little bit longer. Yeah, it looks cooked to perfection. Careful, it's hot. I told you! Oh my god! <laughs> burning your mouth. It's good though. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap. Really good. Very hot. Very fresh, but it was good. You got it was good. Wow. It's our new breakfast for now. Yeah. So it's bread time. So I'm trying the two jars of water instead of the wet towel this time to see what happens. Bears are starting to wake up too for the season. Ever since they can smell it. Mm. it, smells good. It looks good. Yeah, it does. The last one's a big daddy. Looks good. Nice one. Hey, you want to stay warm? You're sleeping in there tonight. <laughs> yeah, right. Cuddle up in a little ball. Okay, enjoy your bread. Bye. I'll see you 800 pounds later. <laughs> <laughs> we cooked so much bread today. Sloppy Cinnabons. <laughs> 
Our first really time ever trying to make them, so. Yeah, we'll get better next time, but they're gonna taste delicious, I can tell. Okay, so now it's uh, about 4.20. Perfect. Peanut butter cookies? Those look bomb. Here. There you go. <clears throat> Cinnabon. I have to eat all of these. That's yours. Oh my god. Is it hot? They need raisins and walnuts and stuff. It's good. But it's, yeah, it's some something. Hold well, on, let me try like more in. It's good. It's just the sauce is a little too liquidy, I think. Okay, so next time kind of soupy in there. I need to reduce it down a little bit to more of an icing consistency. It's good though. Your turn. Okay, I'm gonna dunk it inside my <laughs> come come now. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, it is good. I'm not saying it's not good, but for next time, that's all. I'll still eat them. Really good. And we also made a bunch of cookies. So yesterday we made oatmeal and chocolate chip cookies, and then today you just seen me make some peanut butter cookies. Um, they're like super cute and tiny. Look how tiny they are. They're good. There's that one. Here you go. I'm gonna take your peanut butter cookie and dip it in the cinnamon coconut maple syrup. Oh my god, you're getting crazy. <laughs> Listen to that crunch. I love it. So good. Great job, babe. Thanks. Mmm. That's okay.
Come on, Kai. Come on, Kai. Good job, buddy. Good job. Bring it back. Bring it back, Kai. Bring it back. Good job, Kai. Good job, Kai. Only chance I've had to carry an entire garden in my head. <laughs> Am I gonna fall? <laughs> I hope not. That's all of our seedlings, <laughs> except for two trays. Well, we get to use this system. Like I made these so we can stack things, and then I'm gonna put a seat around all the beds too. What do you think? Do you need help or? <sighs> Cheer me on. Go, Jake. Ooh. So in lieu of a greenhouse, we're moving crap around throughout the hours of the day. You guys have followed the journey for a while and you've seen us build these composters and use them for all of our, of course, food scraps, yard clippings. You guys have seen me go out in the ocean quite a few times. And I'm really excited to see what it looks like, like down here, like this far down. Halfway down, it starts to get unrecognizable. Can't see any more food scraps or anything. Oh, worms. Hello, little worms. Black soil. Oh, more worms. Ooh. Getting exciting. Exciting for me. I don't know if you guys get excited for stuff like that. And this is like in cold weather of the winter. Wait till the spring hits and these uh, worms and microbes activate. Yeah, everything's broken down, you can't tell. Wow.
your choke. It is on. No, get your choke like three quarters of the way up. They're tucked in there. Okay. Oh god. Is that gonna stay? Get it. Puma thinks it's like fun time. He's so excited. He's just getting like pummeled in the face and he's just like <laughs> smiling. It's so funny. Yeah. You want to get in? Come on, look. Look at hey, what you have to do for the Puma. What you have to do for the Puma man and the Kai man. What you have to do? You're so fucking weird. You're so weird. Yeah, you're so weird. You're so weird. You're so weird. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, let's go. Come on, back to work. Hey, everybody. That right there is a very welcome sign to sun poking through through that cloud. I know it doesn't look like much to you, but to me that matters a lot. I love seeing it right there. It's been raining nonstop. It's been raining nonstop and I'm finishing up this uh, L-shaped bed, which we're gonna designate for carrots and beets. And it's a massive bed, man. And it's really high because we want it to be level to the other beds and be up above any kind of flood zone. So. You guys have seen the progress along the way, how we kind of hugo cultured this bed, which is like, use all the rotted logs from the forest and then fresh wood chips we chipped and everyone's screaming in the comments, oh my God, the pine needles, they're too acidic, the fresh, ah. come back in June, July, you're gonna see a thriving garden out here and then you'll see what's going on. But the way we battle fresh wood chips is we have all the wood chips that we um, laid out last year at this time. Now they're seasoned and they've been mixed in with bark and soil that we had in the previous pandemic victory garden. And I'm spreading those almost on top. And then on top of this will be fresh compost. So you can see how the wheelbarrow here has all these seasoned wood chips that have been, you know, pulpifying for about a year. And I'm gonna finish spreading those seasoned wood chips and then I'm gonna lay fresh compost down and then we're ready to plant. So this is what will be underneath the fresh compost. I'll now spread about a 12 inch layer of fresh compost, maybe 10 inches. And you guys can't see really well how much white mycorrhiza, mycelium, underground ancient fungus there is on all these wood chips. People pay a lot for, you know, buckets and gallons of liquid and dry mycelium, mycorrhiza powder. And I just have to let it season for a year. So. Just when you guys wonder what's underneath the soil, this is it. The spirit bear lives again. We got it started. Woohoo! It's been like out of commission for what? How many months? <laughs> it's so redneck and ghetto that you're cheering such little mundane things. <laughs> Woohoo! No, I love the spirit bear. I'm so glad that it's got its spirit back. <laughs> this is so great. We got it going. The batteries, I think it was a battery issue. Jake swapped him out, he's a stud, and now we're in it and we're like hoping it's fine. <laughs> and I'm trying not to touch the thick layer of mold that's coating everything inside. I know, here. it's pretty bad in here. I'm sitting on a tarp. Um, but we'll clean it out. Woohoo, spirit bear van. Give me some. <laughs> if y'all have followed Nicole and I for a while, you know that we met through gardening and one of our loves is gardening. Our main goal here at Como Rebi is to escape the food grid by catching and growing our own food with raised beds, permaculture, and establishing a vibrant fruit tree orchard. 
Today, we will visit an island within an island to purchase some established bushes and fruit trees that are grown by locals and are proven to produce well in our area. Much of the west coast of British Columbia is connected by ferries, and today we will pick up our nearly 100 fruit trees in our small trailer using a cable ferry. On the ferry. We got a ton of fruit trees. We're super excited. If you guys watched a couple of vlogs back, you guys seen that we went and visited visited this guy called Peter the Tree Eater. Yeah. And so we looked at trees that he had and so today we are picking them up. He just is a a fruit tree expert that has a lot of local knowledge. So he hooked us up with a lot of fruit trees, bushes, vines that he's successfully growing and things he thinks we can successfully grow on our property. So we're excited to go back and um, See if he's right. Yeah. Do you want to name a couple of the fruit trees or should they wait? Let's see. Well, some plums, some cherries, some kiwis, some walnuts, apples, some almonds, hazelnuts, blueberries, grapes, figs. And then Peter's also growing some varieties of pawpaw and persimmon, which he didn't have ready to sell yet, but I'm excited to see that he's growing them in the ground because I'll find them. We're excited. The dogs are excited. I think they're just ready to get back home and run free. They're really good car dogs. We put them in here so that they have the ability to lean against the kennel and have yeah. padded surface. Say and hi. Hi, Puma. <laughs> he looks so. We can watch that, I guess. All um, right, let's get back to the property. And then Peter's place is pretty remote, so we had to take a cable ferry to get to it, and we had to go through the forest on the old dirt road in our car vehicle pulling a little trailer yeah and so we had the dogs running behind us for exercise in the forest as they were it was really funny following the vehicle They're happy to be home too.
Hey, back home with my fiance. Hey. <laughs> we look famished, but everything looks great here, and it's always fun to come home and know that our music playing, electric fence, and no bear got in. No bear got in. All that stuff defends against the bear, and everything's in great condition. But uh, people can't feel what we feel here, and the amount of rain and humidity here is next level. I would say this is definitely one of the rainiest places on the planet. But temperature-wise, what do we got outside right now? Seven Celsius outside, and it's six Celsius in here. <laughs> so it's colder in here than it is outside. Yep. It's so odd that the yurt is trapping cold air in here. Yeah. Okay, so I'll light this fire up. Uh, you guys just saw us take the trip down to get fruit trees. We can't wait to unpack it and show you guys. It's quite a process to bring um, things like fruit trees here. We uh, have a barge bringing over the whole order that Nicole and I have tied up on our trailer. Now that we've come back, let's light the fire and bring some life to the yurt. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> yeah. Sun is out, huh, boys? It's the first day of March. Yay! <laughs> there we go. That's 250 watts now. Nice. Hey. <laughs> it was light at the 
die in die Betonung. Mhm. This hat is somebody I found on uh, Instagram called Surreal Goods, and she does embroidery. So she embroidered this cool yurt hat. It's like an all cotton hat, and then the yurt is really cool, and uh, it's got a bear on it. It's got a bear, yo. And if you see uh, coming up, if you see me wearing this around my neck, um, this ring is three different orca, and uh, it's from a First Nations artist here in. British Columbia, and this is like a promise ring that I'm wearing for being engaged in a call. So, just so you guys know what's going on. So, have you guys seen me fill up the first little seedlings over here? The mixture that I made was pretty much like 90% peat moss with a little bit of compost and some perlite. Now that I'm transplanting them to bigger, um, to a bigger pot size, and they're actually growing pretty well. I'm just adding, it's still peat moss, but I'm adding more compost in there to give them a little bit more nutrients so they can keep growing. Good, I just gotta now stick my hand back in the freezing cold <laughs> to open the valves. Uh. Cork it! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Disaster! Shit! I didn't put the black thing on first. Wait, want to make him help you? Hold on, I think I got it. All right, so people aren't going to understand, like, what did you just do? You just let, you uncap something and all the water rush into the wood stove. Yeah, so we cap these off, um, so there's no water in this at all. And then this, I just un undid the valve, so I'm undoing the top one now. <laughs> it's bubbling. <laughs> and so basically I the back part of the wood stove is a chamber for the water, the front part is for the fire. So if you don't have water going through this and you have a fire going there, it'll ruin it. But I forgot to plug this off. So there's like a valve in the back of the wood stove. So when I plug this up, I release the water out of this. Um, so if it freezes, it doesn't damage the inside of this. So if it freezes, you don't want water in this at all. Because so it'll crack the wood stove. It'll crack it. So um, when we're done using the chofu, I plug it up if we want to keep the water. And then I release this. So all the water just comes out of this. And I forgot to do that first. So. Anyway. And then the hot water comes in where? 
the hot water so the cold water comes from the bottom the cold water will suck in like that it'll like do its thing it'll warm up and then it'll shoot out the top here it's like a science experiment yeah. <laughs> thermosiphoning hey i like this shirt too on you it looks really good thanks <laughs> i got it at comorebi.ca it's our... definitely check it out <laughs> why doesn't puma get one should we make a little like a doggy jacket just get him a small <laughs> he would freak out <laughs> Freak. Oh no, there's a spider. Save it. Bro. Nice save. Oh, it's so much more enjoyable when it's not freezing. <laughs> this is so nice. The steam looks so good. It feels so warm. Mm. Do you want a friend in there? Yeah, you can come join me if you'd like. Sit. You brought cookies out here. <laughs> <laughs> cookies and wine. They're healthy cookies. Maybe. Maybe. They're organic. Or I we could just say that they're. Um... No, thanks for the snacks. Oh, do you want me to move? Okay, we're gonna see how much that I weigh here. Oh my god. Oh wait, we do think the water's gonna overflow and hit the tray. Yep, oh for no, sure. get it, get it, get it. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, how come my skin is stinging? Like there's some sort of a salt or something in here. What's in here? Oh water! You want to come in with us, or you like the water? You're so cute. What's stinging my skin? Uh, avocado vinegar. Oh my god, there's so much vinegar in here. I feel that much. I can tell. Whoa, it's so steamy. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting cooked. <laughs> Jake and Nicole's soup? putting some garlic bulbs in this bed and uh, they're from this farm down on Vancouver Island called Shamrock Farms and they grew some beautiful garlic that we picked up uh, last season at a farmer's market when Nicole and I were um, traveling a bit back then and we've been saving it to plant now and then I found this garlic that just is so beautiful that we grew from the pandemic victory garden that had sprouted out. We had forgotten these bulbs, I guess, when we harvested from the small garden you guys saw us build last year and they sprouted up. So we're gonna, we're super late to the season with these bulbs that I just planted, but these ones give us a jump. So I'm gonna divide them out, keep the roots intact and uh, half the bed will be about two months ahead of the other half of the bed. But the smell is just 
sweet garlic intoxication. Okay. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if you can see these. I'm gonna be planting some beets right now. These are the variety that I'll be doing. Beets are one of my faves. I love them so much. So super excited to get these going. Okay, so all the beets are done and now I'm doing carrots. So this is the L-shaped bed that we made and this whole long strip is gonna be carrots. Um, and I have five different varieties of carrots because Jake and I absolutely love carrots as well. Um, so I'm gonna plant these up. Hey babe. Yeah. Are you hungry for lunch? Am I hungry? Oh, I'm starving. Indian? Yes. With some chapati? Chana chapati. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Grow babies, grow. Yeah. I sent my love. <sighs> when you did that, the sun came out. Look at that. My strength. It's my love. Bing. It's my my superpower. We got the bonfire going for hot dogs and marshmallows tonight, vegan dogs. New cherry tree planted there, and what are you doing with the pizza oven here? I'm trying to make wispy bundles, but Kai is making it very impossible. Wispy bundles?
Thank you. Here you are. Now go cook me some food. Because okay. <laughs> I'm hungry. Stay warm from that baby. Whoa! It's like fireworks. <laughs> it's like if I sit down, it's gonna burn my hair. It's
it's the best night ever to do the fire because everything's wet, but yet clear. We can see the stars. It's just gorgeous. Not as gorgeous as you, but what do you think? Is this fun? Can you feel it? Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> Here you go. How's it smell? Good. You said it uh, earlier off camera. You said it smells like. It tastes like India. Nice. <laughs> and then I also have some of our fresh uh, baked bread that we made yesterday in the oven to dip in it. I should have chosen your fresh bread. Wow, it tastes really good. Mm -hmm. I think uh, if I have an Indian twin, he embodied my spirit while I made this thing. <laughs> it tastes pretty authentic. Yeah, it, <laughs> it tastes like the Himalayas, like Sharma and Deepak and Gunshot. Inside, inside name drop. Nobody knows but us. And then after dinner, we have uh, unlimited supply of vegan marshmallows thanks to the YouTube fans out there sending them to our P.O. box. Yeah. If you guys watched the episode where the bear broke him, we uh, lost all our vegan marshmallows in the P.O. box you'll see in the description below our videos. We get bags of vegan marshmallows every time we hit that peel box. So thank you. Fire is magic. Yeah. Water is magic. Earth, Earth is magic. Is magic. <laughs> Metal is magic. What's the fifth element? Air. Nope, air is not one of them. Wind. Nope, wind is not one of them. Wood. It's around us. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. On what? <laughs> On surviving the winter. Oh. You did it. I think this is officially our start of spring. Garden time, and I think we still have wood left over. We did it. Yeah. I'll tell you guys out there in YouTube land, some of the locals that we've talked to recently that live around our area, once in a while, we might come into contact with somebody, which has been a lot less lately because of COVID. It seems like all the hermits that might live around here have just kind of become more hermited, you know? Yeah. But a lot of people in this area believe in the Sasquatch <clears throat> and have seen the Sasquatch. Yep. And when they tell you about it, it's very convincing. Mm -hmm. There's one person that has a homestead down the way and he's like 75 years old. I think his wife's also about 75 years old. And we talked to him before and he said, yeah, he was out in a boat one day and they were fishing. And out of the corner of his eye, you can see some kind of a log on the shore in the distance. And when he looked over at the object that had caught his peripheral vision, it all of a sudden started to move and walked into the forest. And he said it was like a big ape man. And he goes, he goes, it was the Sasquatch. He goes, and I, I'm telling you. Fast forward, we find another local who's the same age as this person that had the Sasquatch encounter. This person has lived his whole life in this area. They went to school together. He's also 75. And he said to us, if that person says that he saw the Sasquatch, then he saw it because he never lies. And the conviction of the second man made us really scared that the first guy actually saw the Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a few months later, we just happened to um, bump into uh, his wife uh, hiking around here one day. She asked us if we seen the Sasquatch uh, where we are. Kind of point blank. Yeah. And we were like, no. I said, I don't think so, unless he's a shape-shifting Sasquatch. And she goes, yeah, <clears throat> probably hard to see him right now because they've moved further into the mountains to hunt deer. Hunting deer? Are Sasquatch like cougar? <laughs> Down in the comments, do you guys believe in the Yeti Bigfoot Sasquatch? What do you call it? Do you believe? Wait, how does the go? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this 
Puma. <laughs>